on this episode. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. I bought another JZX100. Happy birthday to me. I couldn't help it, I bought another JZX100. Regular viewers of the channel will know that my previous JZX, a Mark II, which had just been tuned up to about 430 horsepower and was going really well, uh, was unfortunately caught up in a paint shop fire in which it completely burned to the ground. As you can see here, there was absolutely nothing left of it. After that happened, I thought, well, I'm getting an S15 Silvia. Maybe I can sort of forget about the JZXs for a while, but there was a JZX shaped hole in my heart that needed to be filled, so I had to get another one. After that happened, everyone found out about it, and I had a lot of people you know, calling me, messaging me, saying, oh, if I see a car that might suit you, I'll let you know. And uh, recently, this came up here at Rusty. So this is a JZX100 Zenki Cresta. So Mr. Arita from Rusty called me up and said, I have a customer who doesn't use his JZX anymore and would like to sell it. Now the good thing about this car, it was all tuned here at Rusty, so it has a known history. We know the previous owner. It's not like an auction car where we know nothing about it. We know everything about this. And uh, as you can see by the, by the paint, the dirty, faded, cracked paint, clouded uh, headlights, and general sort of tattiness of it. Oh yeah, this is perfect for you, Alexi. This is like all the other cars you buy. So you might be thinking, well, what's a Cresta? I've heard of the Chaser and the Mark II. Well, they're three cars, like three brothers. Right? And the Cresta is kind of the black sheep of the family. So this, if you can kind of imagine, is like an old Japanese war helmet. And they have a bit of a different image to the Chaser and the Mark II. Okay, so just uh, ignore those wheels. It's on there for registration. So this is a JZX100 Chaser. And the Chaser is the equivalent of like a 3 Series BMW. As you can see, the headlights look a lot like the, I think it's the E36 headlights. And it's got that sort of, you know, sporty sedan look. So the image of the Chaser is, you know, the uh, executive businessman, international traveler, man about town, business suit sort of car. Now the, the Mark II, there isn't a Mark II here, but uh, a Mark II is the sort of thing your dad would drive if he didn't have crown money or if he didn't think a crown was a good idea. So this is a, this is a crown over here. This is like the uh, older brother of the JZX series and the Cresta. Well, how do we explain the image of the Cresta? You know the, that meme where it has like first owner and then third owner and the way the car looks different? It's kind of like that with this. So the first owner of a Cresta would be an elegant man, a respectable man, who likes to keep it kind of low key. As you can see, it's not a very ostentatious looking car. Unlike the Chaser, the front grille is, you know, small and respectable. The brake lights are small and not too ostentatious. It's a simple sedan. The, uh, the line of the boot is nice and simple. It doesn't have that sort of sporty spoiler look that the uh, Chaser does. But for the third owner, it's a completely different story. JZX100 Cresters were a favorite car of a lot of street drifters around Tokyo, uh, such as the infamous Team Fool back in the day. As you can see, this one has the full uh, Vertex body kit. So Vertex actually made a kit. It's missing the side skirt though, unfortunately. But it still has the silver and white two-tone, which was a factory color for this car. It was slightly rare, but um, it did exist. Right, this is the part of the video where I try and convince you guys this is a good idea. So we have um, carbon fiber bonnet, which is nice. Big Honeywell turbo, and it's meant to make about 600 horsepower tubular manifold. Now uh, there are some sort of old parts in this car. You can see sard blower valve, so it gives you an idea of when it was tuned, uh, you know, a few years ago. Uh, we've already got a big sard radiator. We've got an oil cooler down there as well. It's going to get retuned with a Link ECU, the type that uh, just replaced the factory board. Oh, see this here? That's what you do when uh, the car's too low and the upper arm hits. You cut that section and kind of, um, yeah, it's a bit sketchy, but it'll be okay. Now, the best thing about this, 2.5 litre 
1JZ, but this is not a 2.5 litre, this is actually a 1.5J. And what that is, is a Supra block. The three litre bottom end out of a Supra or like a you know a 2JZ car, an Aristo or something like that. And um, you bolt on the old VVTI head. You have to match up a couple of the oil galleries, I think, but that's about it. And then you have a three litre. So this is actually a three litre. Another Supra part here, you can see the brake booster, that's from a Supra. And that's a mod that's often done to uh, balance out the brakes on these things. And why would you do that, you may ask? Well, it has huge Brembo brakes, slotted floating rotors. This is a uh, big overkill for this car if I'm going to drift it. Apparently the previous owner did drift, but uh, used to do time attack as well. So you do need big brakes like this to do time attack. Uh, I'll probably be replacing them, but uh, that's why it has that Supra brake booster there, because it has slightly different brake bias, which makes the uh, JZX a little bit easier to control. So all of these engine mods were done here at Rusty, which is good because they, you know, they know what's been done, and they know it's been done as far as the engine goes, they know it's been done well. What we'll do is we'll get the ECU tuned up and just sort of take it out as is for a while and see how it goes. I think is uh, the best idea. But there you go. So it is a 600 horsepower odd 3 litre. As you can probably see by the dirt on the window, uh, it's been sitting still for a long time. Uh, the previous owner used to drive it a lot. It used to be his daily driver, believe it or not. But uh, it's been sitting outside his house for the past few years doing nothing. And the story I heard was that uh, his kids are starting to grow up and didn't want to ride in uh, dad's drift car anymore. At least there's no cat prints on it like there were on the S15. All right, let's have a look at the inside. The door trim looks nice. As you can see, it's not the black interior like on the Mark II. It's like a slightly lighter charcoal grey sort of colour, which was uh, found on the Cresters. Oh yeah, look at this. See how the uh, glove box is missing? I actually have the glove box from my Mark II. Uh, it wasn't on the car when uh, it burned down, so maybe I could install that on there. So this has the, the Roulant G interior. Let's see on the floor mat. Roulant. It's like a Tour of V on the Mark II and Chase it was the Roulant G on the Cresto. Of course, five speed. What is this drift button? He's got a, what is that? He's got a 50 yen coin for a drift button. Okay, well, I guess I get 50 yen off the car when I buy it. And luckily for me, it has the nice uh, carbon fiber style interior. There we go. Oh, he was a smoker. Doesn't smell like smoke though, that's good. But uh, look, what car from this era doesn't smell like cigarettes anyway? I think it's a sales point, honestly. All right, trashed bucket seat. He had a cat. Uh, yeah, I don't know about this uh, leopard print thing here. The reason why you get these stickers with um, JDM shift knobs is because the car legally has to have the shift pattern displayed somewhere. So if the shift knob doesn't have it, so there's a six speed one and a five speed one there. Uh, 162,000 kilometers. And you can, you can just barely see it. Normally you'd be able to see the automatic shift pattern here because uh, these cars were only sold automatic from the factory. There were no manual cresters. So that kind of makes this even rarer. Also one cool thing, which makes this a nice street car is the uh, uh, sunroof as well. Oh, hey! He forgot his he forgot his gloves. Yeah, I kind of miss having a sunroof, and that's one of the good things about the sedan is because it's big enough I can sit low and not have my head hit on the sunroof. Like on a Silvia, I can't run a Silvia with a sunroof because it's uh, too low. There we go. Link, 
G4X and it should be written, where is it? There it is, JZX100. So Mr. Arita has already started uh, tuning the car. Ooh, Takata harness, nice. And one of these uh, cross braces, probably expired fire extinguisher. Why is doing this so much fun? Like looking in cars that you've just bought for the first time. Oh, okay, that's kind of boring. There's nothing in here. I wonder if it has the spare. Is that a CD changer? Oh, that's the old uh, navigation system. Random wiring. It wouldn't be a second-hand Japanese car without a bunch of wiring and you don't know what it is. Random wiring. What is this? Oh, free tools. And, and a glove. Ooh. There's a length of hose in here, maybe for stealing fuel. There's a spare wheel, but no spare tire. Okay, well the rear end doesn't look like it's been smashed at all. That's good. It's one less thing I have to deal with. So for these taillights as well, the later model has a section on here, on the boot lid. Whereas these ones is just this. I don't know, I kind of like the understatedness. I think we're going to go for more of a streetcar style with this one. I actually, that reminds me. Remember on the previous Mark II, I was running a whole bunch of Serial 9 parts? Uh, I think it was diff mounts and rear cradle bushing replacement, like the solid replacements. Uh, one of their shift knobs as well. Well, those guys have a podcast and I was kind of interested in some of the things they said in one of their recent episodes. What do you think of these like TikTok builds? come into Japan. I have not seen anybody go to Japan and build a sick car, to be honest. I don't know, I can't think of it. Yeah, so I messaged Gerard and said, what do you mean? And he said, no, no, not you, Alexi, not you. No, he meant me as well. And he's right. The idea with the previous Mark II was that it was going to be kind of a jack of all trades. It was going to be a street car, also competition, and a have fun car. Well, I think the S15 Silvia needs to be the comp car from now on and this needs to be the style car i mean he's right though I mean, what's the point of being back home in australia and seeing all these cool street drifting videos from japan and you're always wanting a jzx and they're moving here and not buying and building the coolest looking street style jzx you possibly can so that's what this car is going to be it's going to be low it's going to be loud it's going to be nasty it's going to have lots of horsepower and it's just going to look like the cool Japanese style sedan that all sedan lovers around the world love. I mean, it, honestly, look, there's, there's guys overseas who do these sedans better than they're doing them here. And you know, I can't be here in Japan and be outdone by guys overseas. That said though, it's not all gonna be style. It's gotta be cool drifting as well. So what I'm gonna do here right now is set a challenge for this car. I wanted to do this with the previous Mark II, but never had the chance. So we're going to do it with this one. It's not a very difficult challenge, but it's going to be fun to do. It is going to be the Sanpatsu Challenge. If you don't know what Sanpatsu is, here's an explanation from me from a while ago. In Tokyo Bay, there's a famous street drifting spot called Oi Fudo, or Oi Port. And this is it here. Because the roads are so wide here at Oi, the main thing to do here is what's called Sanpatsu, which means three motion. So you come down here, cut it left, right, left again, and then in there. Now, other than Oi, there's three famous places to do Sampatsu on a circuit. First one is at Ebisu Circuit, Higashi Course on the front straight. The second one is at Scuba Circuit down the front straight. And the third one is here at Nikko Circuit on the back straight. Oh, yeah. So those are the four places I need to do Sampatsu for this challenge. Ebisu, Nikko, Scuba, and Oi. Wait, did I say four? I meant three. Three. It's not going to be very hard to do this challenge, but it's going to be fun. Also, the 1JZ meeting is finally running again this year after being cancelled for the past two years because of you know what. So we're going to sign up for that with this car. So we need to go to this event too next time it runs. Chiba Damashi. That's the one uh, at Mabara, you see, with a lot of 
a lot of JZX's there as well, baking around that main corner. That's the whole point is doing it for the gallery, making it look cool. All right, that's, that's gonna be the point of this car, is looking cool for the gallery. Because I think that's what sedans do really well, because they're so big. There you go, starts right up. No problem. Well, it works pretty well. Oh, yeah, that's one other thing about the uh, Cresta as well. It has door frames. See? Whereas the, the Chaser and the Mark II don't. The windows are frameless. Why? I have no idea. And one last thing, if I don't show you this car, people are going to get angry in the comments. Because everyone's going to say, oh, what's that Aristo in the background? Well, this is... Uh, X Revolf demo car, from what I know. This is the sort of thing that um, you'd want to take on the Wangan. Look, huge brakes. All right, half cage and very nice interior. Look, it has an electric heated seat with the little um, thing to pump up the rear lumbar support. This is for sale, by the way, if you want to talk to Rusty. Alright, that's all for me today. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and also of the progression of the Cresta. By the way, um, I made a little playlist of the Mark II. If you look in the playlist section, from start to finish, you can watch the uh, chronological progression of the Mark II. It's actually kind of sad, but it is what it is. And look, we have something new to play with now, so we'll be okay. Also, if you'd like to see the videos a day before everyone else and help push the content forward even further, uh, doing weird stuff like buying a Pro Box, uh, Patreon is the way to do that. Patreon.com, link is down below. These people here, my tier 3 subs over on Patreon. Actually, that's why sometimes when you watch the video when it first comes out, it'll have like 600 likes and 200 views. Like That's why, because it's been like watched by all the Patreon and also the Twitch subscribers. They get to watch it early and it kind of messes up with the you know, first few hours of the numbers on there. So don't worry about that, that's why. So check out the Patreon link for more details. Here's some more videos you can watch, including the JZX uh, playlist. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Also, there's a bit of a funny story about why I waited until my birthday to buy this car, but I'll tell you about that next time.